All right, so this is a bit of a Q&A. I asked you guys a few episodes ago to throw me some questions, so I'm going to be answering some of them. Uh, Char, Char, Charlene Char asked when to become vegetarian or vegan. I'm not. <laughs> it's just a little bit more affordable to be slightly more vegetarian. I love meat. I love food in general. I'm a big foodie, and there's not a single kind of food out there that I, uh, I won't eat. So that solves that. Timmy Sweets wants to know how I find people like the girl in Halifax. The girl in Halifax actually, as I explained in the video, is my brother-in-law's sister. I met her at my sister's wedding. So, um, but it does illustrate a good point, And that's that there's a certain level of charisma that I had to learn. Like I am not an outgoing person, naturally speaking. Like I grew up speaking French in a completely English area. Um, I've felt very alienated from the people around me. I was a very big shut-in, an artistic type, kind of a weirdo. So none of this stuff comes naturally to me. And I've had to learn, oftentimes the hard way, to be more, um, I don't, I don't want to say charismatic, but just like carry a smile more often and be ready and open and to ask questions and to learn to communicate with people in such a way that you're not a dick. <laughs> Learning to communicate on a certain level where you're ready and open for any kind of experience or, or anything that these people have to offer. And that involves a lot of asking people questions and uh, not being too shy and being ready and open to uh, accept anything these people say. So, yeah, there's been a lot of, like, chance encounters. And there's also been a lot of reaching out online and um, through friends of friends. So it, it's just, I mean, everyone's from everywhere, so it's hard to say. Uh, do I ever get lonely on the road? Yeah, I mean, like, everyone gets lonely sometimes, but like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit of a weirdo. I enjoy spending time on my own. I really do. Um, it's either one extreme or the other. Uh, I either want to be completely immersed in the craziest social stuff that's going on at the moment, or I want to be completely alone and a thousand kilometers from the next human being. And you know what? I do get lonely. I do get lonely sometimes, but the advantages of solo travel are so many, and, and I think it's totally worth it. Kenny Gl uh, Ken Glenn Kennedy wants to know if GDB is one of my favorite strains. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Gary Goldsmith wants to know, as a photographer, I am interested in what gear are you carrying? I primarily shoot my vlog on a little point-and-shoot, a Sony RX100 Mark III. It's been in my pocket for two years. It's been absolutely destroyed. I've had to send it in once for repairs. It's got a hair on the sensor. I don't particularly like it that much. It was quite expensive. Um, I also have a Nikon D810 with a 16 to 28 28 Tokina lens and a Rode video mic. Uh, I will be keeping the mic, but the Nikon gear I'm selling, I'm buying Sony gear. I have a little uh, cheap $100 uh, carbon fiber tripod that I use a lot. Um, I have a Gorilla Pod that I use a bit. I ordered that new cool aluminum one from the guy in California who designed one for uh, Casey Neistat, but I never got it in the mail yet, so I'll have to look into that. Um, yeah, I'm going to switch all my gear over to Sony. I'm going Sony A7 Mark II. Uh, it's cheaper, smaller, and it does everything my DA10 does pretty much, so I'll be going with that, and it's much better for video, too, so that's the direction I'm going. All Sony. I'm not a particular fanboy of any company, though. Cranky Babushka wants to know if I budget for Champ's health and vet visits. Champ gets his booster shot once a year. That's pretty much it. Honestly, he's, like, the most easygoing dog ever. He has no dietary issues. He has no issues whatsoever. He gets a checkup when he gets his booster shot, and he's in fantastic shape. He's an old dog, you know, he's not going to be around forever, but he's doing good. And he's almost 13, so. A lot of people just telling me every bit of weirdo advice, because that's what all I get on YouTube comments. This is another thing. If somebody posts something online and you go to comment it, comment on it, don't give them advice, okay? Nobody wants advice. Unless they're asking for advice, nobody really wants advice. And I find that... 99% of YouTube comments are you should or you ought to do this or you did this and I heard a good saying the other day that I really like is called should is shit. Don't tell other people how to live their lives. Don't tell them how to do stuff. It could be as simple as like stuff about a toilet or stuff about you know as big as like their entire life decision. To be honest it's very 
alienating to tell somebody that and to like be it's just aggressive and socially a huge faux pas just don't do it don't be a dick do you have extra health insurance or what OHIP doesn't cover dental eye check cups blow especially traveling yeah you have to get health care health insurance when you travel in the United States um, I think with OHIP you can uh, in post claim stuff that happens but it takes years to clear and will bankrupt you for years, um, which will probably ruin your life. So I don't do that. I got an insurance deal. I don't know much about it, honestly. To be honest, I, I got a decent, what I think is a decent deal. It probably wasn't that great. And I'm of the strong opinion that most affordable insurance companies aren't going to have your back when it comes down to it. I tried to read as much fine print as I can. I'm not a legal person. I don't know. This stuff scares the crap out of me. I just try not to get hurt, okay? Jagger GF01 wants to know what the challenges of van dwelling with a dog. Um, van dwelling with a dog, the challenges are, well, all the same challenges you have living in a house with a dog. There's a lot of responsibility. But then on top of that, like, this is a very difficult space to climate control. So if you've got to leave your dog in it, um, you really have to take extra considerations. Now, I use a lot to keep the temperature down in the, uh, in the summer and keep the temperature up in the winter. There's a lot of insulation, there's a lot of like reflectics, I got my fantastic fan going. All of those things help, but the major thing honestly is planning your life around it. So like in the middle of the day when it's the hottest, I'm going to be with Champ wherever we're going. And if I need to go in somewhere, um, I try to plan that always to be in the afternoon, evening, or first thing in the morning. Um, I don't like to leave him in the van in the middle of the day, so that's pretty much it. And to be honest, it's pretty warm for both of us, so Middle of the day, I tend to look for somewhere to go swimming, and uh, me and Champ have a good time that way. It's a lot more fun. It, it, it sounds like a constraint, but after a while, you build it into your life, and it's the same as having a dog in the house. You know, you build it into your life, and then it becomes your lifestyle, and he forces me out of the house way more often, which is really cool. Uh, Frederick Koning uh, seems to think I have everything figured out, <laughs> and he would like to know... Uh, here are my plans and goals for the short and long term. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I have this uh, mentality that when you're planning for something, like at a computer, uh, sitting comfortably with the internet connection and all your fingers out, reaching out to everything, you work on specifics, right? Like there's like very specific GPS coordinates and meetups at this certain time, very specific time, very specific place. But once I'm out on the road, it's a totally different story. It's a completely different set of skills when you're just like out on the road and trying to be open to possibilities. You have to learn to look for certain things. It's very difficult. At first, it took me like six months to learn it. But uh, after a while, you get used to it, like how to find good camping spots, like on the fly, stuff like that. Um, but short term goals, uh, yeah, I'm doing Baja as the title ensues. And then after that, I think I might go up to Vancouver. Um, I'm going to work in Vancouver for a bit just to like shore up some funds, fix up the van, do a few other things, and then I'm gonna do, I wanna get up to the Arctic Circle. So this summer I'm going to go north, and after that, this guy is being sold. Uh, we'll see for how much, but yeah. Long-term goals, I am going to Southeast Asia next winter. Uh, I want to do, I've got like so many bucket list items, you know? I wanna own a sailboat, I wanna circumnavigate the globe in a sailboat. I want to do like crazy off-roading expeditions. Like there's one from uh, uh, one that goes all the way from London to Mongolia, and you like build up like a, a, a hot, an ambulance or something like that, and you just race across with teams. That sounds like a lot of fun. I want to go on more motorcycling tours. I mean, there's lots in Africa I need to see. There's so much in in the Middle East I want to see. Oh my God, so much in the Middle East I want to see. So much in Eastern Europe I want to see there's just the world of possibilities you know so i don't know where and when it's all going to fit in but i have a long list of travels and adventures i want to go on and i just gotta see which one works best for the timing if i find a boat really cool that's really soon as after this trip maybe i'll get it right away and i'll do more boating stuff if i don't maybe i'll do more backpack and motorbiking who knows um but that's kind of my plan i don't have a plan for settling down anytime soon I think that's at least five years off. GL Peter wants to know, how do you uh, charge your van? Off a converter, do you wait for somewhere to plug in? Uh, my van, I had a 30 amp uh, AC out 
like plug-in. I cut it, tied it into my inverter. I have a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter. I have a decent battery bank and a big solar bank on the on the roof. And I have a 30 amp relay in up front that was $1.99. And that is the best charging thing right there. $1.99. It's attached to my starter. So when I uh, turn the ignition, it flips my relay and then it attaches the front battery to the back battery. And as I'm driving, it charges. It, honestly, if you're going for basic setup, that's the best one right there. $1.99. And it'll charge your batteries. I never plug mine in. Um, the battery bank's enough to get me through the night, the solar's enough to charge me in the day, and then if I'm driving anywhere, well, then I've got surplus of power to go for days and days, so that's it. Julie Green says she knows all about my showers, which is a little creepy, but, um, she wants to know more about the dirty stuff, bathroom trips, odor in the van, BO, dirty laundry, and dog hair. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a solo guy, so I probably stink pretty bad, but... I use uh, I use bubble and twine stuff for the beard. Oh, so good. It makes me smell so good all the time. Love that. Baby wipes every morning, uh, between showers every time. Uh, I like to try to like spruce it up with my showers actually. I've been using less and less YMCAs. Uh, I've been bathing in lakes and rivers. Um, just like any opportunity I can get, I'll do it. And it's actually made it a lot more fun, you know? Like you don't, it doesn't have to be a chore to like do stuff like that. Uh, laundry, I just do a laundromat, same as, like, loads of people. Um, the dog, he kind of stinks sometimes. I brush him a lot, and then I try to wash, every time I wash myself in, like, a lake or something, I wash the dog, too, because, yeah, he can stink. Oh, yeah, so people want to know about Champ. Uh, no, no pro go pronto wants to know about Champ. Um, he is nearly 13 years old. Uh, we got him, my family got him, actually. My sister Sarah convinced my parents to just go look at some black labs in a barn out near Aurelia. Free puppies. Um, and Champ was the rent of litter. He's half the size of the siblings. Yeah, come here. What are you doing? What's on your mind? You want to talk about it? He's the runt of the litter. He's the smallest one. And he jumped right into my mom's lap. And, uh, and uh, that was it. You know, my mom was so vehemently opposed to getting another dog. But after that, you know... He won her over, and uh, the rest is history. I've been training him since he was big enough to fit in my palm of my hand. And uh, when my parents decided to spend more time in Florida, I took the dog on full time. I think it's been five years or something like that. And yeah, he's been with me since day one, so it's been really cool. Hello, Schaffer wants to know what kind of gas miles you get. 14 miles a gallon. What uh, Liam Spivy wants to know what kind of boat am I thinking of getting? Uh, I'm thinking of getting something older, actually, to be honest. I want to get something weird, man, because, like, the coolest thing about this van trip is how weird this van is. It is such a unique, spectacular van, and I want to continue that with the boat. I want to get something very bizarre. Um, I was looking at getting something old. I like custom doing stuff myself a little bit. So uh, everyone says that boats are extremely expensive, and uh, I don't think that's necessarily true, but uh, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, review Aquatic. Uh, Re review aquatic wants to know how i deal with the heavy cold in canadian winters well i'm in utah right now so i don't at all uh steven kluge wants to know hey Simon, i'm interested if you think in the future has changed that you broke up what did you uh missed the most on your van uh, steven i don't understand the comment but uh since i broke up i mean like i'm traveling solo now right which is a big change and I love traveling solo and I don't think I'm going to change that anytime soon to be honest I'm very much attached to uh, this new new chapter of my life so I don't know what do I miss most about my van well I don't know I have my van still so maybe what I miss most when I was in the motorcycle trip I'm going to assume okay I'm Stephen I'm assuming that you meant during the motorcycle trip what did I miss the most about the van um, I'm going to say, yeah, warm bed, <laughs> warm bed that I didn't have to worry about or think about at all. You know, that was, that was really nice. Acted wants to know, I don't know if that's actually their name or if it was removed, uh, wants to know if someone can pursue the van dwelling lifestyle in a 17 foot box truck, moving truck. Uh, yeah, of course. Actually, I thought about that a lot. One of those little box trucks with like the four banger that's like right under the cab. And then the boxes, oh, that would be so good because you could just totally custom do that entirely. All right, well, that's it for the questions. Um, 
Maybe we'll do this again sometime, but uh, don't post your questions in this video because I'm not doing this again for a while. I've got a lot of other videos I want to make, so maybe we'll meet up in another three months and we'll go and do another Q&A. If you've got other like personal questions and you need to reach out to me, uh, follow me on Instagram. You can hit me up on the Instagram chat there. That's a good way of hitting me up. Uh, Snapchat too. Um, so all those links are at the end of the video or at the bottom of the description. Just uh, check it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the questions. Maybe subscribe or something. Cool.